Good morning, students. We are discussing on water resource engineering and hydrology. Well, we are learning about uh, hydrological analysis, and in today's lecture, we will discuss about flood routing. So, what is flood routing? Well, the flood routing is the process of determining the reservoir storage volume and outflow rates and the rise of water level in the reservoir that corresponding to any inflow during any peak flood discharge. So now, um, if we uh, look for the definition of a flood routing, so we can say the flood routing may be defined as a technique of determining the flood discharge and arresting the same in a reservoir for some period so that a sudden a uh, flood discharge may not create any damage in the downstream areas. So flood routing uh, is a technique that is used for the flood control. Well, by flood routing, the maximum water level in the reservoir can be determined by only studying the past rainfall records and the previous flood hydrograph. But by flood routing, the peak flow at the upstream side of the reservoir is controlled in such a way that the flow at the downstream side is reduced to safe discharge. When the flood passes over a spillway, the outflow rate is different from the inflow rate because of the effect of the storage of the reservoir. While the flood hydrograph is thus modified after the passing over the spillway and its peak get reduced. However, the base of the outflow hydrograph is uh, longer than the base of the inflow hydrograph. It is achieved by uh, detaining the flood water for some longer period by closing the spillway. And then the excess flood water is released gradually by opening that spillways. So this is how somewhere the the reservoir routing can be done. So let's uh, discuss something uh, in detail for the reservoir routing. Well, in the normal cases, the rainwater from the catchment uh, area enters the reservoir and the water level then reaches up to the full reservoir level. Well, here the excess water flows through the spillway, but due to the excessive rainfall, the flood discharge is highly increased and rainfall level exceeds the full reservoir level that uh, we keep as a normal pool level and reaches up to the high flood level. So this volume of water is absorbed temporarily uh, for some period in the reservoir and then allowed to flow to the downstream through the spillway. Now to understand this normal pool level, high flood level and everything, uh, you may need to go in the previous lectures where, wherein we have discussed about the different levels of the reservoir. Well, the reservoir can be either controlled or it can be uncontrolled. So the controlled reservoir has the spillway with the gates to release the water at the time of need only. Okay, now the controlled reservoir are those whose spillways are not controlled by the gate operation. So here the flood routing involves the fixation of maximum reservoir level that is up to which the structure is completely safe. Then the reservoir routing requires the relationship among the reservoir elevation, storage and the discharge that uh, need to be known than the implementation of outflow pattern from the reservoir uh, so that it may not create any damage in the downstream areas. So in the hydrologic routing procedure for the reservoir, a continuity equation is to be followed and that continuity equation is that the inflow minus outflow that will be equals to the change in the storage. So this equation needs to be satisfied for the procedure of reservoir routing. Well, here I is the inflow, O is the outflow and delta S is the change in the storage. Well, uh, 
the inflow hydrograph coordinates at a time interval of delta t that we consider as a uh, i1 i2 and i3 and this will be known uh, since the inflow hydrograph is known okay so this is uh, for the inflow hydrograph now the uh, outflow coordinates uh, that could be o1 o2 o3 and so on now however these are not known and are to be calculated so over a time period of delta t inflow volume will be i1 plus i2 by 2 into delta t and over the same time interval that is a uh, delta t the outflow volume will be o1 plus o2 by 2 into delta t now this is about inflow and outflow so that should be equals to the change in storage so the difference between the inflow volume and the outflow volume will be the change in storage that is s2 minus s here neither the energy equation nor the momentum equation is applied but the relation between the inflow and outflow and the storage that needs to be used and that is for inflow minus outflow that is equals to change in storage so here as per the continuity equation the inflow that is i1 plus i2 by 2 into delta t minus outflow that is o1 plus o2 by 2 into delta t that is equals to change in storage at s2 minus s well in this equation the first term on the left hand side that represent the volume of water that entering the reservoir and the second term represent the volume of water that is leaving the storage and the term on the right hand side represent the change in the storage well proper units must be chosen for storage to maintain the compatibility for this equation for an example we can say the inflow and uh, outflow are expressed in meter cube per second then the storage must be expressed in the cumac into days okay now uh, i1 and i2 are known from the given inflow hydrograph that to be routed through the reservoir so o1 and s1 are the initial outflow from the reservoir and the initial storage in the reservoir which are generally known or assumed and the second that is o2 and s2 are the two unknown quantities which needs to be determined so thus to solve these two entities that is o2 and s2 one more relation needs to be uh, produced well in the reservoirs the water surface is level and then it can be assumed that the storage in the reservoir is independent of inflow and the outflow is dependent only on the storage this relation between the storage and outflow which provides the additional relationship required for s2 and o2 and for this reason only the reservoir routing sometimes known or called as the label pool route well uh, the second routing that is the channel routing that we can say the open channel routing where in a river during the floods the flow is non-uniform and unsteady and this type of flow is very difficult to solve thus the hydraulic characteristics varies from stage to stage and also from channel to channel there may be a lateral inflow or the outflow also and thus uh, in the reservoir route the storage was a unique function as of the outflow discharge well in the channel routing the flood hydrograph at various sections of the reach is predicted by considering a channel reach and an output hydrograph at the upstream end the specific length of a stream channel between the upstream section and where the hydrograph is known and the downstream section where the hydrograph is to be determined so that is that particular portion is known as the channel reach okay now the hydrograph at the upstream end of the reach is the inflow hydrograph and the hydrograph at the downstream that is known as the outflow hydrograph well the storage in the reservoir reach can be divided into two parts first prism uh, storage and second is the wage storage here in this figure you can see uh, the wage storage and the bottom part that is the 
prism stories. Let's discuss about these two, two stories in brief that first the prism storage is formed by a volume of constant cross sectional along the length of the river. It is the volume that would exist in uniform flow that occurred at the downstream depth that is the volume formed by an imaginary plane parallel to the channel bottom that is drawn at the outflow section of water surface. Next is the wedge storage. Well, this wedge storage is the volume between the top of the prism and the water surface. It is a wedge like a volume formed between the actual water surface profile and the top surface of the prism storage. Now, the prism storage S is similar to the reservoir and it can be expressed as the function of the outflow discharge. Well, the wedge storage can be accounted by expressing as the SW that is the function of inflow. The total storage in the channel reach can be expressed as S is equals to K into X into I raised to M plus 1 minus x o raised to m where k and x are nothing but the coefficients m is a constant exponent well it has been found that the value of m varies from 0.6 for the rectangular 1 for the natural channel well the Muskingum method is uh, more widely used uh, for the hydrologic channel routing so let's discuss about that Muskingum method and how it works for channel routing. Well, the Muskingum method. Well, here the storage equation was developed by G.I. McCarthy and other in the connections with the studies on the Muskingum River in the U.S. And hence, this method is known as the Muskingum methods. Well, uh, we had the equation of S. And if we apply that uh, total storage equation for uh, two edges, that is uh, one and two, for that the change in storage would be S2 minus S1, that is equals to K into X, I2 minus I1 plus 1 minus X, O2 minus O1. Here we have taken the natural channel and that's why the value of M, that is one, and uh, for that reason, we have not implemented here the I2 minus I1 raised to M because the M value is 1. Now, substituting above equation in the continuity equation uh, as a I1 plus I2 by 2 into delta T minus O1 plus O2 by 2 into delta T that is equals to S2 minus S1. Well, if we rearrange these all terms, then uh, we'll get O2 is equals to CO into I2 plus C1 into I1 plus C2 into O2. Wherein this C0, C1 and C2, these all are the constant values that is in this equation. Okay, so what would be the C0, C1 and C2? Well, uh, after rearranging, the C0 would be delta t upon k minus 2x upon 2 into 1 minus x plus delta t by k same way c1 would be delta t by k plus 2x uh, upon 2 into 1 minus x plus delta t by k c2 would be 2 into 1 minus x minus delta t upon k and 2 upon 2 into 1 minus x plus delta t upon k well, this C0, C1 and C2, the addition of all this constant would be equals to 1. Okay, and that will be the verification uh, for the fact that can be used as an arithmetical check on the computed values for the routing coefficients. Okay, so this was the Muskingum method. Okay, uh, so here the seventh chapter that is hydrological analysis is uh, completed. I hope students uh, you understand this chapter properly. Thank you for your kind attention.